So now we're going to talk about naming covalent compounds. We saved them to last because they're quite a bit easier. Remember that if a compound is covalently bonded, we call it a molecule instead of a formula unit. And the big difference with molecular compounds is you can have the elements that are nonmetals. Remember, covalent compounds are made from nonmetals. They can combine in different ratios. So, for example, you can have car one carbon and one oxygen. You can have one carbon and two oxygens. Um, same thing with nitrogen. Nitrogen and oxygen can combine in all sorts of different ratios. That's not true of ionic compounds. I will not use your time in trying to prove that to you. But every single ionic compound occurs with a set ratio of the elements, and it doesn't change. So sodium and chlorine will always combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, Magnesium and oxygen will always combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. So that's what's different between covalent and ionic. Um, and that this combining in only one ratio has to do with the charges having to balance each other out. So back to covalent compounds. Because they can combine in different ratios, we need to use prefixes in our name to tell us how many of each element are in the compound. Okay? So you do need to memorize these prefixes, 1 through 10. One thing that's the same in naming a covalent compound as it was for ionic is the second part of the name has a suffix of IDE. There are no polyatomics in covalent. Polyatomics are ions. There are no ions in covalent compounds, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, so here's practice. They're pretty simple. I would turn my lecture off and give these a try on your own. So how'd you do? Phosphorus trihydride. Okay. So the rules are pretty similar. The first element in the compound is named just like it is in the periodic table. The second element has a suffix of IDE, just as in ionic. However, the difference between ionic and covalent is we use a prefix to tell the reader how many of the element there are. Since there are three, we have to use tri. Tri is the prefix for three. Now you may have noticed or wondered why is this not called monophosphorus trihydride? Because there's only one phosphorus. Listen carefully to this because this is an important rule. If there's only one of the first element, you leave the prefix out. Okay? If there's only one atom of the first element, you leave the prefix out. Okay, so that's only if there's one of them. If there were two of them, you'd still use di. If there were three, you'd still use tri. Now, kind of tricky, again, is if there's only one of the second element, you do use a prefix. Okay? So look at the formula of carbon monoxide. There's only one of the carbon. That means there's no mono. It's not monocarbon. It's understood. However, there's only one of the oxygen, and we do have to use a prefix, so that can get confusing. Dinitrogen trioxide, okay? If both elements have more than one, both need a prefix, okay? So most people find covalent compound naming and formula writing much easier than ionic. The biggest problem is when I start mixing formulas of covalent and ionic. When I mix them up, um, the tendency for everybody is to start using prefixes for ionic and Roman numerals for covalent, and you get all the rules jumbled. So my recommendation is to try to name some ionic and covalent separately and then do a worksheet where they're all mixed together. And when they are mixed, the very first question you should ask yourself, is there a metal in this formula? If there's a metal in the formula, you need to follow all of the ionic rules. If there's not a metal, you follow all of the covalent rules. All right, so here's going the other way. If you're given the name of a covalent, so your clue, you see any type of prefixes at all, you know you're talking about covalent compounds, okay? 
just you have to know your prefixes. So you've got nitrogen, di means you have two of them. You have chlorine, hepta means you have seven of them. Carbon, there's no prefix, which means there's only one of them. Chloride, you have tetra means four. That's kind of a hard prefix to remember. Dihydrogen monoxide, start out with hydrogen, you have two of them. Oxide, you have one. Okay, if there's only one, you can leave it out. So that's the official name for water, dihydrogen monoxide. Kind of cool. That's it for this pre-recorded lecture. Go practice nomenclature and formula writing, please.